guys, it's Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Now I haven't done a video for a few days because I've been hard at work figuring out different mechanics for different sets. So over the next couple of days, over the next week or so, we're going to have videos on the new sets, including the Merciless sets, the, the Supersonic sets, and also the Slayer set. Now, I think the Slayer set will be its own video. We'll probably put the Merciless and Supersonic together because they come from Centranos uh, and going into detail in exactly how they work. Now, I know for a fact the Slayer set is confusing a lot of people, and I've had a lot of people ask me how exactly the Supersonic works. So we're going to show some example cases of where you can use them and how it's working programmatically. How is that Slayer repeat damage working? But in the meantime, on the topic of sets, we are talking about those in this video as well, because we're going to talk about how you can use the Merciless set to really make this Trunder Hydra Clash team work when you don't have Yumikos. Now, there are other content creators that have done non Yumiko Hydra Clash teams, so I'm not stealing anyone's thunder before I get a lot of comments in chat going, hey, Bronco's done this. Uh, I think Biohack's done this. Mullet Reaver's done this. It's, yeah, I, I'm fully aware that there are plenty of people who have built teams around this non Yumiko. But what I really want to showcase today was the value of how to set it up properly, going into detail how it works, and it, a bit of a debate in terms of towards the end of the video about whether or not it's, it's healthy for the game. I mean, I'm not really... I don't really want to make this video about nerfing this team, but there is a big issue for me in terms of how it's affecting clans. As a clan leader, as a member of a cluster, as someone who is, has a responsibility to keep the motivation of the clan high and organize things like how do we how do we win these events? It's very difficult, as I can see people who don't have this team just lose so much faith, confidence, and interest in Hydra because they just get destroyed not even like their their best built nightmare teams get destroyed by this team but what team am i talking about of course i'm talking about the trender team so what we are seeing is people are using cloak of the ages which attacks one enemy and then attacks all other enemies with the second hit dealing 60 percent of the first hit to do insane damage in hydra effectively the way that this works is it uses the first set of multipliers for the first attack so if i'm attacking a decapitated head we get 200 bonus we get the books if my trunder was booked, which it's not at the moment, we get things like weakened bonus multipliers, we get things like buff multipliers, heaven, multi heaven cast multipliers, all that goes into the first attack. We whack and hit the target, great. Then 60% of that damage gets taken as a as a value, as a as a basically as a sum of value. So it could be if I hit for a million, I'm gonna take 600,000 of that. And what happens to that 600,000 is it puts that as the base multiplier, just like this attack has got a six times attack, it, instead of the six times attack, it puts 600,000 as a number. And then it remultiplies the damage again. So it gets decapitation again. It gets heaven cast again. It gets feral buffs again, protection damage buffs again, um, weaken bonuses again. All of these things get remultiplied. So what ends up happening is the second attack does so much more damage because of the fact it's getting 400% crit damage. 400% decapitation bonus. So the first hit might be 4 billion. Well, the next hit is going to be 13, 14, 15 billion. And the way that you cycle it is you basically get the decapitation bonus, you whack with the decapitation, you kill all of the heads. Now, if you don't have the Yumiko teams, you're probably restricted to sort of normal or hard with this setup. This setup I've seen work on hard, but I did mine on normal in this run, mainly because you just can't cycle this A2 enough. If you have the double Yumiko Shujen setup, the Yumikos can reset each other's reset ability, which means that Shujen will basically permanently do this on Trunda, who will permanently do Cloak of the Ages. So, so every single time you go reset, reset, you use Purging Petals and then Cloak of the Ages. Reset, reset, boom, boom, again and again and again and again and again. And you see what I mean. So what I'm using for this team is I'm using Venus. We've got Decreased Defense, Weaken and HP Burn. Decrease defense and weaken is very important. She is in the cursed set. You absolutely want to run Hex in some capacity. A lot of people use Lydia for the increased speed. If you don't have the Shu Zhen, the Shu Zhen will give you the increased speed. You probably need Lydia because you want to go fast. You need you need speed in this team. I'm using Shu Zhen so I don't, so I can use my Venus here and keep my Lydia off a nightmare team, for example. But we've got the Hex set here, so whenever we're attacking, we're going to be putting out the Hex. The Hex will give you so much damage because it's going to do a significant proportion of it. So it's 2% for the AoE hit of this Cloak of the Ages because the second hit is an AoE, but it's 10% of the first hit. So if you're hitting for 1.4 billion on the first hit, you're doing 140 million damage to all heads. And that can get multiplied. So the hex component multiplies as well. So it would be 140 million on all the heads multiplied by 
two or three in this instance because it's 200% boost. So you're going to do like six billion from the hex. So you absolutely want to have cursed on here. If you don't have cursed, it's just not you're not going to get anywhere near the numbers you want. So cursed is, is essential. But here is where you can use Merciless to be very interesting. I have got two reset champions. Now, the order of priority here, Emic is the best non-Yumiko option because his ability is on a three-turn cooldown and it's going to reduce all allies by one turn and this can be reset. So you can reduce this down to a two-turn with another reducer, for example. So ideally, you would have double Emic. If you could do it, double Emic would be the way that you would want to do it. But if you don't, then you go to Painkeeper. And after Painkeeper, you go to someone like Countess Lix. But it gets a lot more challenging with Countess Lix. I tried Countess Lix. I found it to be a lot less reliable. So I've got one Emic. I'm not using him anywhere else at the moment. I'm not using him in a Permatorrent team anymore. So I've dedicated him to this team. So I've got this one ability. And then I'm using a Painkeeper to also do this ability here. It's on a four turn. This can be reduced. So Emic is going to reduce the Painkeeper and Painkeeper is going to reduce the Emic. So de facto, we've got a two turn and a three turn. That's kind of like the rough way it's going to work. But the sets that we've got here, if you notice, I call this the super duper get me back to my ability set. It's just a little thing I've got in my brain because what we're using is the Merciless set and the Reflex set. And we've also got Refresh. And I think I've got Cycle Magic. I haven't got Cycle Magic here, but the goal is to basically re reduce the A2 as much as I can. When I'm in battle, I'm not using this Trunk Heart Sanctuary unless I think I'm going to die because I don't want to actually reset this cooldown. I'm constantly looking to reset the duration of this because the more I can reduce cooldowns every turn, the more I can trend A2. One trend A2 is all I need. So that is the key thing. And this ability here, when I didn't have this built, this team didn't work. When I put this, these sets on, I had at one point two of these, or even, I think even three of these back to back. Because the thing about these sets is they don't limit each other. They work at the same time in the same ability, but they work differently. So reflex will happen when you start a turn. If I start a turn, I have a chance to reduce the cooldown. Merciless happens when I deal damage. So Merciless will not proc if you don't attack an enemy. But if you attack an enemy every single time, then you can get both a Reflex and a Merciless because they're rolling independently. They don't roll together. They roll at different points and they can happen at the same turn. Same as Refresh. I can Refresh proc and have a Reflex proc all at the same time. It can happen. Now, the goal with Refresh here is we're just trying to get add an extra spot, right? You need to, to make this work, you need to have two Merciless accessories because it's a four plus a four. You have nine spots, so you need two or three. You can go three if you want to, but I would recommend you look for two and then use a Refresh. Two Merciless accessories, which you get from Cintranos, and then you can have a four-piece uh, Reflex with two pieces of Merciless that sets up that alignment. It does also stack with Cycle of Magic. If you've got it, Cycle of Magic is a different role again. So you can have three different cooldown reducing effects firing in the same turn and also get a refresh. It makes it, I think, roughly that it, with all of these combined, you have a 60% chance you get at least one cooldown reduced every single time Emic will take a turn. So when you've got Emic, it means that this could absolutely you'd use A3. At the start of the turn, it reduces the cooldown. At the end of the turn, you get an activation. It, it resets it. You're good to go. It could even be when you have this on cooldown, you can come in with Earth Root Tendril, attack, merciless proc. At the start of the turn, reflex, reflex proc. I've got this back the next turn. Same thing in Painkeeper. I've mirrored the builds. I've got exactly the same builds. And as I mentioned, like you don't need crazy gear. I've got pretty, what I, for my account, average gear. This is five star gear. This would get sold if it was any other set. Look, five star gear, 13 speed, terrible. This is a triple roll, but it's, it's a five star and it's attack with HP. This is probably pretty good though. This one's much better. 18 with the mythical roll. That one's a pretty good banner. But even on the, the, the MK, you can see I've got like a you know, it's an average ring. It doesn't really matter. It's no speed on the banner. Ideally, you'd want speed on the banner. You want to go fast with this build, but if you haven't got it, don't worry. Just put the, the if you've got it, just put it in. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Five star gloves. I think it's got a speed roll. It's nothing crazy. It's crit rate. It's, you know, these this, the helm is pretty average. It's just a double roll speed. You don't need the craziest gear in the world to make this happen. If you can get ascension on speed, great. What your goal is here is to go fast. The quicker you go, the more resets you can have, the more Trender A2s you can do. Now, Shu Zhen, I would also do, but I haven't done because I, I'm not going to limit my Shu Zhen outside of Arena. So she's built for an Arena build here. So she's just super fast with accuracy. Um, 
that's just the way that it can work. So in terms of stats, just to give you a bit of a rough idea, I've got him at 62,000 HP. It would best use the Hydra drop down so you can absolutely see what I'm doing here. Uh, 257 speed Hydra bonuses will help you tremendously. Bit of crit damage, bit of ignore defense, doesn't really matter. All I care about is speed and as long as they don't die. At normal, it's very difficult for your heroes to die, especially these support champions which have high base stats. Now my pain keeper, we have got as well at very fast speeds, just 269 speed, 265% crit damage, probably because I've got crit damage gloves because that's all I have in reflex. 2.4k defense, 49k HP, and just using those base stats. Now my pain keeper is six star. And a very cool thing you can do at six star is use survival instinct. Because at six star, anytime you receive a debuff, you gain 10% turn meter, which is very valuable because we're using Gurptuk. It's very popular in the Trender team. You'll see Gurptuk Mossbeard because Gurptuk will place three poisons on you. And when there are three poisons, when there are poisons on your team, he will increase the damage your champion outputs. So you can see here, allies under poison inflict 7.5% for each debuff on them, stacking up to 30%. So I think that works around about four poisons. He will provide three, so you kind of need one from somewhere else, but it's, it's absolutely fine. But he also places block buffs, so which is really handy because you will sometimes face a reflect buff. That kills this team because there's no revive in there. It stops the wrath head if he gets a little bit unlucky. You do have affinity issues to worry about because Trunda's magic, so she might weak hit back to back. It takes a bit longer to kill a head. So it's kind of handy to have a block buffs and bonus damage. But because he's placing poison every four turns, because my grip tech is not booked here, every three turns this would be, because he's placing poisons, every time he places a poison, you're giving your pain keeper 30% turn meter fill because there is no restriction. So it goes on, we get 30% turn meter fill, and every single time that happens, we basically constantly fill it. Now, just to show you how this is working, let's just run it into a Doom Tower run here quickly. I can just take this out. Boom, 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 boom. And the way we can confirm this behavior is working, because I know some people might be saying, ah, oh, well, it doesn't do that. It only does it once. When you hit six star, it does it three times, because I can show you this here. Three texts of boosting turn meter. So every time we get that debuff here, Every time we use the A3 for Gurptuk Mossbeard, because remember as well, we are reducing the cooldowns of his ability. So he will be doing that more than more than three turns, more than every three turns. It's probably every two turns. Every time we do it, you will see he basically goes, we'll slow it down. Watch the turn meter bar here. One, two, three. Three texts. So every single time she gets a debuff, she's gaining 10% turn meter fill. I was sort of racking my brains to think, because she's six star, what's the best blessing for her? And actually this works out really well, because what do we want to do? We want to go fast. The quicker we can get back to this ability, reset our Trunda, the better. So that's a really cool trick if you've got a survival instinct, even at like five star, it's fine because you're getting 10% turn meter fill every single time she takes a turn. It's just much stronger at six star because I get three bouts of it, not one bout of it. Um, so that's how that is working. And then Shujen is just for stats here very fast because it's in my arena build. A lot of improvement to do because I think this needs to be speed, it's HP at the, at the moment. I got a lot of dusting to do. Uh, I've got kind of like a really rough Venus build. You can see with Venus, I've tried to go triple refresh because I don't need Merciless accessories because I got to have Curse and you can't have a sort of, I could go four piece Merciless, four piece Cursed. That is a possibility, but I don't think I actually have enough Merciless gear. Oh, I, I could do it. I think it's because I didn't want to commit this and I just thought, it would be better to not do it. I could potentially go Merciless with Kurt, with Hex here. Obviously, we want to make sure she's always AoEing because of Hex. But I have gone triple refresh here. And again, I've gone some pretty okay average unrolled builds. She's currently running at around about 255 speed. So these are the builds. Now, the Trunder build is the most important build. You absolutely want to have Ignore Defense because the goal is to try and make this do true damage. I've got her in Helm Smasher as well, so that's 25%. Savage is 25%. We've also got area bonuses of 12% going on. And then ideally, once I get a six star, we would go for Crush and Rend. You basically can get yourself to hitting true damage. If this ability hits true damage, it will absolutely destroy. We are talking 400 million hits potentially. It's absolutely mental. When this becomes six star Crush and Rend, this team probably goes straight into hard and it's absolutely fine. I'm running it at normal at the moment. But I'm using mostly some sort of throwaway gear. Now, I can run her slow because I've got Shu Zhen. If you're not running Shu Zhen, she probably needs to be up at the 250 mark as well. But because I'm running Shu Zhen, I can drop the crit rate. I can drop a lot of different things. So I've got her currently in Hydra at 340% crit damage, 8.4k attack, 163 with that 12% ignore defense. 
you do not absolutely, you, you will need to go faster and have her at 100% crit rate if you're not running crit rate buffs um, and you're not running um, Shu Zhen. Now, Shu Zhen's also, I think, going to give her crit damage. So she's getting like increased attack, crit damage, crit rate. It's very good. Good substitutes for Shu Zhen is someone like Arbiter can work really well. I've seen a lot of people use Arbiter instead, increase attack and just run the 70% crit rate with a bit more speed. Absolutely got her in Helm Smasher. And I've also tried to find some refresh accessories where I can, but not at the sacrifice of damage. She is the one that needs to do crazy damage. So I've got crit damage with crit damage. I'll sacrifice a little bit of attack so that I can get a refresh because that might be that might pay off, but I'm not gonna sacrifice a triple attack percentage, a triple attack percentage. That is things I won't sacrifice, but if you can get refresh in here, great. You won't be able to really get like, I mean, you could throw in a Merciless if you want to as well, just to get that set up if you've got good Merciless accessories. Probably the ideal setup maybe is two Merciless with Savage or even maybe six Merciless because six Merciless would give you 35% in order defense. So yeah, six Merciless would be the best build. Um, for this, if you can, you'd get the, the cooldown reduction as well. I don't have enough ex accessories to make it work, so, and I don't have enough gear because I'd have to take it off my Nightmare team. So I've gone with this build. I could probably improve this further. Merciless, get more ignore defense. The, the closer you can get to true damage, the stronger this becomes. That's the key thing. So that's a lot of talking explaining, but the key thing I want to point out is this setup here, the Merciless plus Reflex, will allow me to basically get this back so often it makes it like, it makes it almost like, Yumiko light. That's the way that it works. Let me take you into some runs now so I can showcase to you the actual damage and how it is operating in the run that I did. So we're about 33 boss turns in, what, 503 million. So this is kind of like the rotation you're gonna do here. We're gonna basically constantly reset, get back to this ability. We actually need one more turn, but it's fine because Shu Zhen will be able to grant us a turn here. Um, and the key thing is always keep killing. We just want to keep killing the head. We don't want to use this right now because we know we're going to get an extra turn. And we're going to see at the 508 million, we're going to go absolutely crazy. And we're going to kill the heads almost immediately. Now, what I want to show you is the absolute insane amounts of skill reduction. This is on a three turn cooldown right now. When we're going to attack, we always have a chance to basically reduce the cooldown. Every single time you take a turn and every single time you attack an enemy, you have a chance to reduce the cooldown. So we can reduce it here. That's going to give us a two turn and we're back around to these abilities. Now I'm going to save the battle skill ability here because essentially we don't want to use it yet because we can't guarantee that it's available. We need more cooldown reduction. You want to always want to try and keep in your brain. Where is Trunda's A2 currently? Right now this is fine. We can reset this. It's got one more turn, so the next turn is when I want to use my Shu Zhen's guaranteed extra turn. We can hit this for extra damage like this. And then we can fire out more shots to this. And you see 21 million. So this team can keep going. It can keep going and going and going. This is only normal. So I could probably get up to 1 billion, 2 billion, 3 billion. It's absolutely disgusting. And you can see I've already got it back almost instantly. That's available to me. Create, reduce this cooldown. And we're going to reduce this again. It's already back. This is the power of this set. Now, Torment heads are a little bit dangerous. You've got to be careful with this. Uh, the, these particular heads, but we I know we basically need another turn because it's a four turn cooldown. So we can either a three here, which, you know, you can do if you want to, but you will attract the fear head. We can use the cleanse from Gurptuk to be able to cleanse this. That is an option we can do here if we want to. Right now, I'm just going to a one. And then I know the next turn I can grant an extra turn. Ideally, I need to get the poisons back onto Trunda because we want to make sure that we get that extra damage here and hopefully... We're not going to have it this time, but it's fine. We're going to lose out a bit of damage, but we've got to try and kill this Torment Head as quickly as possible because it is the Torment Head that is going to ruin this run if uh, we cannot do this. So we're going to just put out these block buffs here. A1, this decapitated head. And you always want to try and have a decapitated head up because right now it's going to be a bit difficult to kill through because we've got this 75% damage reduction. And this is probably the most dangerous this run has been in so far. But we have got some pretty good damage up here. We can make sure she can get a turn. And now hopefully the A2, we've actually got the A3 back, so we can actually A3. Hopefully it's not a weak hit and we can kill and get rid of any fears and we're back to where we were. And you can see how quickly we are rotating back to our reset abilities. And the nice thing is because the Venus is on an in a, on a three turn cooldown, the Shu Zhen's all a three turn cooldown, uh, you're basically getting those back at the same time as getting your Trunda's A2 back. So you, you're basically cycling it all the time. But this is not possible. There you go. There's another... Another merciless proc there. This is not possible unless we have 
these merciless reflex builds. That is what is enabling this. There was no point me doing an extra turn here because we've got that cooldown. It's on a one turn cooldown now, so we kind of know we need to um, either use this ability and then grant an extra turn, which is what we're going to do here. We're going to save that because we know it's on cooldown. There's no point us using this right now. Grant the extra turn, and then we're going to have this available to us. We can target that head and kill the heads again. You always want to have a decapitated head up as much as you can, even if they don't have debuffs. That is the key thing. Now, when you're, when you're using your abilities here, you notice I am not using my Pain Keepers A2. I'm not using my MX A3, because what we want to do is make sure that the reflex procs are happening on the reset abilities. If they are not happening on the reset abilities, then we run the risk of basically reducing the cooldown of the non-reset ability, which we don't want to do. We really want to make sure that we're constantly and almost all the time using resetting the cooldown ability. Now we can do this as well, make sure we get that back. I think she's got it back here, which is not quite, but that's fine. We can A1 and then we can grant an extra turn from Shu Zhen. We can grant the extra turn here. We don't have the poisons, but that's absolutely fine and kill it. Again, the Torment Head is the biggest problem. That's what we need to take out. So we're going to have to probably commit a cleanse from Gurptuk to remove the fear from our Trunder on the next turn. And the nice thing about this ability is it doesn't remove poison debuff, so it won't remove our damage, it's just going to remove the thing that's going to stop us from doing damage. Now again, there's no point using the A2 right now because I know that I don't have the, the actual extra turn here. I will use it in one more turn. We will absolutely need to do another cleanse, unfortunately, so that is the risk here. I've kind of made a mistake. I should have A1'd. I shouldn't have A2'd because we don't have a cleanse available right now. Uh, so we might as well just reset it and hope for the best in this situation. We can grant an extra turn. This is just going to be an RNG fest. Are we going to hopefully not get feared? We got feared. That was pretty, that was a bit of a mistake on my part. I should not have done it really, um, but it's fine. We missed one A2 cycle. It is a bit of a problem. I'm going to keep running this through now and I'm going to show you how much damage this team can do once we've got it fully, once we finish the run. So we're at actually about 1 billion. I really just wanted to stop it here because I wanted to do one big shot here. You can see all the heads are decapitated. We've pretty much got only one weak affinity, which is great. One thing to note when you're targeting the heads, you do want to make sure you're targeting not the Suffering head because this, unless it does true damage, you know, if you've got a six-star crushing rend, you can absolutely target this on this head here because then you will do true damage if you have like the crushing rend com combined with the area bonuses, you can get yourself up to 100% true damage. That's why it really goes crazy. But otherwise, the Suffering Head carries the most amount of defense. So in ideal terms, I target the head on the right because it doesn't have Hex. So we want to Hex across to all the other enemies. Otherwise, we're not getting any damage on this in terms of the Hex component. But actually, we're just going to hit the squishiest head because it's strong affinity as well. And you'll see, like, we're at 959,000. Look how much damage this is going to do. One billion damage. It's just absolutely insane. There's no point in me doing an extra turn with um, the Shu Gem because obviously I need to reset them, but I can absolutely send out the debuffs here, try and get Hex out, set it back up for another run. Hopefully we'd get like a reset ability here if we could, and we could hopefully get one more run at this. We don't have it available yet, it's just through, but we can always AoE as well, and the AoE does pretty good damage. So that is kind of like, I just want to show a big hit there of what it can do when you get it set up. We're only at half an hour in and I'm already at 1 billion. I wonder how far this can absolutely go. Another time for us to do another four hit, one hit shot, and it's gonna be the case of we pick the squishy's head, strong affinity, whack, bang, 1.3 billion. This team is absolutely disgusting to run. We can obviously run an extra turn here. We can go again because we've got a refresh proc, which means we can do it one more time for another 1.3 to 1.4 billion damage. Okay, how absolutely crazy. Then we can reset and we can reset and we can go one more time. Okay, the heads have respawned. It ruined our fun, but you know, refresh accessories also incredibly powerful for this because you can give yourself an extra turn. If you can get two of those back to back in that setup there, you are quids in and we're only about 140 boss turns in and because the enemy heads are not taking a lot of turns because we are killing them so quickly it does kind of mean we can you know probably go a lot longer than we normally would we're probably going to be able to hit 2 billion maybe we can even hit 3 billion with this team it's absolutely insane um, to see how this is working so back on to my carrying on to doing this we will update you towards the end of this run so we've just hit our turn first warning for the turn limit a thousand so we've got set the so it's sort of 66 percent of the way through and we're at 1.6 billion so i can probably get this up to 2.2 billion optimizations can happen here 
I mean, we're running an unbooked Trunda, an unbooked Gerptuck. There are so many improvements we can make here. It's it's astonishing. Now, obviously, I'm losing a little bit of health on my Trunda, so we absolutely need to monitor this. When you're, when you're doing this team, most of the time you don't need to worry about survivability because they don't really hit too hard. But if you fall a little bit low, maybe you get a bit of a bad rotation with certain heads, then you absolutely want to try and make sure you get yourself back fully healed here. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an extra turn, which is going to cause a bit of problem. I probably should have saved that. But um, yes, just keep in mind, you don't want to die. There is no revive in this team. So if you die, you know, it's a bit of a problem. Uh, we can actually get a little bit of a heal here as well. And we'll also get continuous heals from Gurptuck. We have just crested 2 billion at 1,126 turns. This will probably be as frustratingly as I say this, my best ever Hydro Damage Key. It is frustrating. I mean, I will say, though, that it does require a little bit of team building. It's not like put them in, but I will say <laughs> you do need to make sure you put things in the right way with the right stats, right? You can't just put six champions together and make this work. However, the argument that they make that this is like a well put together team can earn like you should you should get rewarded. I don't feel like I, sh I have done an awful lot to build this, considering half of my champions are not even booked. The masteries on them are average okay. Uh, the gear that I've put them is mostly five-star gear, so it's not even like super well-built advanced gear. I'm using the bonuses that you get from uh, the like area bonuses and Great Hall to basically fill the gaps of really bad gear, and it's not actually slowing my damage down. And this is a thing, it can get really crazy. What I would expect is two billion to be the best possible. The really, really well-tuned, the six-star gear, the six-star awakened, the six-star crushing rent trender. That's where I think two billion should be. Not the two-star trender that isn't even booked with five-star gear thrown together with a bit of every eye. Like, come on. It's, it's, this, is, this is the frustration for me. I get it, okay? It's a very cool team to build. It's great. You can have a lot of fun. But this is killing player motivation. Anyway. Rant aside, let me finish off this team. Let's see what final damage we can get. Now, the one thing you've got to be careful of is if you don't have a booked Gurp tech, well, you're not going to place block buffs all the time. And that is what has happened here. We actually had the Reflect buff. We killed our Trunda, but we still managed to get pretty much near the end anyway. So 2.2 billion is about where we're going to end it. Uh, we can just basically probably earn ourselves a few thousand points here by just having a bit of HP burn. So we can probably finish this off with I would say about 2.3 billion, depending on how the next few minutes go. Um, just because normal doesn't hit super hard, so you can always take things like you can give sort of increase crit rate, increase crit damage here. That'll just help us power our way through. The torment head is a bit of a problem though, so um, we're going to end this now. I'm going to let. It, I'm just going to let it auto, and then we're going to jump in. And we're going to see the final results. We absolutely got annihilated by the Wrath Head, so it's not even going to get to 2.6 because of that situation. So let's just let 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 let's let let's choose end fall, and we're going to see then one 1,460 turns. How much damage did we do? 2.2 billion. That is all in the Trunda 1.8 billion. And this is what I said about this team. It's not exactly there's no Yumikos, there's no crazy teams. It's not a crazy Trunda. The the build's probably very good, but it's not a crazy build. The Shujan's not even max level. The Guptuk's not even booked. The Trunda's not even booked. Yes, the Pink Keeper's six star, but that's just giving me speed. Yes, we are getting Termita from the Survival Instinct and various different things like that, but ultimately, this is like very budget in terms of what you could do, and it's already doing 2.2 billion. And this is what needs to change because this is killing the Hydra sort of engagement with a lot of communities because if you don't have the Trunda, you can't build this team. And then you're automatically looking at your Hydro Clash going, well, are we going to get trended or not? Are we going to lose because of Trunda? I've only built this because I feel like as the leader of my clan and I can do this, if I don't do it, then they're missing out on the opportunities. It's not like I'm pretty vocal about Ultimate Death Knight that I don't use Ultimate Death Knight because I think it's such a bad thing. In this situation, I've had to join the dark side because... I have a responsibility to the members of my clan to give them the best opportunity to win. If player are not going to fix this, then I'm going to have to build it. Otherwise, we risk losing all of our clan members to this because they're just going to go, what's the point of me building like an 800 million nightmare team when this just comes along and goes, ha, I can do it on normal with basically average gear. And this is my first run through of this. Once I finished optimizing this, I book up Trunda. We think Trunda's doing 1.8 billion. If she has 20% um, on her books, well, that's going to basically do 2.1 billion. So that pushes up to 2.4 billion just by booking her. 
And GURP tuck as well. We had a couple of situations where we had to slow down because of reflect buff. If GURP tuck is booked as 100% block buffs, then we don't have the problem of reflect, which means we could have probably got an extra two or three. And one A2 on full decapitation heads is about 150, 200,000 damage. So there you go, guys. Um, that is how you build this team if you don't have Yumiko. The key is Reflex and Merciless. You need those Merciless accessories. You will need to do Sintranos. This is why doing Sintranos, even five-star terrible gear, even normal accessories is worth doing if you can do it because if you can build this, this is your best avenue to win in Hydro Clash, which gives you then Stone Skin accessories. So you can build teams like one turn Stone Skin in Savage, one turn Stone Skin in Bolster, one turn Stone Skin in Supersonic, which I think is Arman's the uh, Magnificent's best build. So let me just show you why this is a big problem. Immediately you can see, look at Shooter's team here. Shooter, I speak to Shooter a lot about his team. He has fine-tuned this team to an absolute degree. Some of these heroes are some of the best you can see in the game. The stats are really crazy. He's got everything in the right place. He's got a really strong Turvold. He is getting 1.6 billion from hard there. His Nightmare team is doing 409 million and he's getting 1.6 billion from there. Look at my team. It's not even shown up yet, but look at, look at how many points that my team has got. 2.2 billion. It has beaten both of his finely tuned, heavily crafted teams. Both of them. And he's using things like Grazor, six star Newt, two Hanarak, Michinaki, it's a five star Nekmothar, and it is just getting defeated. Absolutely destroyed by this. Now we can see other people here. This is an Agrius team. He's got 680 million. Now his Nightmare team here is actually beating me, but then it has also got Archer. It's got a six star Acrisia. It's got a five star Wukong here. So it's a very well built team as well. And I speak to Agrius a lot as well. Agrius is a member of my Discord. I know how much work that has been put into these teams. And the problem that I have with the Trunder situation is it devalues all the effort this team gets. It's not to say that these teams aren't needed still. You still need to do two other keys. And unless you have two trenders lying around, it's very unlikely that you can build the same trender team twice. But if I was to run the actual Yumiko trender team, it can do 50 billion on Nightmare versus 680 million. It's not even close. It needs fixing. And it's going to push us all the way up to the top. You can see straight away, look, my one key has basically put me above Monga, who has done three full keys. And he's got an incredible Nightmare team at 418 million. But my one key has pushed me all the way up there. So once I put my Nightmare key, which can do about 300 million, and my hard team, which hopefully will do a lot more, I'll probably be reaching like five or six billion here. And at least I'm helping my clan win Hydro Clash. But let's leave it there, guys. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think that this Trunder team is a problem? I'm not actually calling necessarily, I guess, for a nerf. I mean... Maybe I am. I, I get a bit worried about my my clan and my clan's motivation when they get defeated by these Trunder teams. And I, I know some people in comments will be, well, just get good, summon more shards, all that jokes aside. But it is a bit of an issue for clan management, clan leadership. If the members of the clan just, just don't feel like they want to engage in it, then you, you kind of, you know, these rewards are very important. These rewards are very, very important for building arena teams. So for me, it's very important that we get these hydro things. So it's, it's, it's an issue. But let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you in the next video.